Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. We are back today with a whole bunch of news to cover for you guys. A whole bunch. So, first of all, uh, from the official raid Discord announcements over here. Oh, let me make sure you guys can see that. There we go. Um, <clears throat> we're going to have a whole bunch of improvements coming to the Hydra Clash, which is actually really exciting. So, first of all, um, in the first test run, there was only one piece one accessory in every single chest. Um, since not uh, uh, not all clans were involved, try to accru avoid creating too much of an advantage for a limited number of clans who participated. I mean, okay, sure, I get it. I, I wonder if they just reconsidered anyway, or if that was intentional. Who knows? So I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, during the current Hydra Clash, the rewards will be balanced. You'll get between three and six accessories depending on the chest. So brass and ornate brass, basically brass chests will give you three, Argent chests will give you four, a gilded chest five, and an ornate gilded will give you six. So if we jump over here and we jump into the Hydra Clash and we see how we are doing. By the way, I might do uh, just a video summing up all my teams. I did, I think, about 100 million on Brutal last Hydra Clash. I went in with a very different style of team this time and did almost 150 million. So definitely improved stuff there, which is cool. You know, is it equal to doing uh 10 billion um not quite but hey there it is <laughs> so these are the chests over here so uh the brass chest the bottom reward uh is going to be upgraded like we said that bottom reward will now give you three accessories so even if you get the bottom place chest coming third you will still get three accessories unfortunately they could be in this brass chest four star which is so stupid i wish they would remove that at least it's gone once you get past that i mean it's unlikely you should only be getting 35 million points unless you're very, very early game. Like anyone that's a bit further into the game, fine. But that's still dumb. That's still dumb. But hey, uh, three, the uh, Gilded Chest is the second reward for first place and the top reward for second place. And then that Ornate Gilded Chest is the top reward for first place. Um, so yeah, it's definitely going to create more competition, a lot more reason to do it. I think this is, I think obviously it's a great change, right? If you were only getting one accessory every week, you could just get unlucky. You might never get the right accessory for the right faction. It's just not fun. Now you're going to be getting much more. And yes, a bunch of them are probably going to be pretty bad, but it gives you a good chance, a better chance of fine, uh, eventually getting some decent ones for the right factions and be able to do some new different builds. So this for me is a big important. There's a visual bug with the Hydra Clash damage multiplier. Um, so yeah, it's showing up on higher difficulties as just giving you a 1x multiplier, but it's a visual bug. You can safely keep the battle result and see the correct number of points in the clan performance info tab of Hydra Clash. The fix of the bug is already in our schedule. So that's going to be fixed very quickly. Uh, if only they fixed all the bugs in the game so quickly. Wow. Wouldn't that be incredible? Bug with Hydra Clash rewards. Some people that were in that first test week, um, uh, did not receive any rewards so they said get in touch with support and they're going to be trying to fix it so that everything works smoothly but that is worth noting uh, let me know actually are you all in this one is this the proper release of hydra clash like is this the proper thing we are up against the exact same teams the exact same um so yeah that's kind of a bummer that is going to be changing though in the future your clan will not be matched against the clans you just fought in the previous hydra clash or two so there's going to be much more variety moving forwards. I think that's a great change. You'd be fighting different clans, not going to be fighting the same ones over and over again. So it means that you will have chances to win in the future and chances to lose as well, I suppose. Um, but yeah, that is going to be changing. Uh, and also there was a bug with clan versus clan live arena points that you're only getting five points for victory instead of five points per crest. So you're getting like 150th or something of the amount of points you're supposed to get. So that is going to improve, so that's good. Uh, so yeah, Live Arena is a really big time sink. I still think it's probably not really worth doing during Clan versus Clan. Like, the time you put in for the points you get out is pretty bad, but at least it makes it a little bit better, I guess. I probably should increase it more, to be honest. Um, but yeah, there you go. Interesting thing here, no change, no change to Court Pill and Cadaver. Um, I, I was laughing about this earlier. I put a post on this earlier just to show you, again, my thoughts on Cadaver. It just continues to amaze me that people think it's totally normal and fine, right? But hey, people do. I mean, people believe anything. It's incredible. I, I just think it's interesting in this case where it's just a game and it doesn't really matter, you know? Uh, it's just interesting how people believe whatever they want. Um, and like, look at that then in real life for stuff that actually matters for like politics, morality, you know, all that stuff. Damn. But like, this was me. This is my key, which is like a, a 
pretty pretty darn solid like end game low spender sort of key right we got 400 million points we've got cadaver team doing roughly 10 times as many points right Corpus and Cadaver team does about 10 times as many points. Then you take the Kraken version of the Cadaver team. When you start getting empowerments, you start getting the Yumikos in there, right? Goes up to 41. That's, what's that? 41 billion, isn't it? That's 41 billion. Crazy. Again, 10 times as much points on top of that, right? There's a huge, a huge sway. It's just very interesting. Like I would say, you know, my previous nightmare I'd say, roughly speaking, I could do maybe about 100 million, whereas like top end uh, uh, Krakens could do probably like 500 million, uh, but maybe more like 300, 400. Um, so, you know, me, fairly low spend versus a Kraken, before they were doing mm, three to five times as many points as me. Now they're doing uh, 100 times as many points. Um, so we've gone from three to five times as many points to 100 times as many points. But don't worry. Plenty of you in the comments saying it's totally fine. No, it's great. This is great game design. Stop calling for nerfs or, or fixes. What are you talking about? You're talking, you're talking out your hole, Nubkex. I don't know. I don't know anymore. <laughs> right. Anyway, next piece of news. So let me swoop this over uh, so I can show this to you. We have information for the 10x tomorrow. So remember, the 10x is going to be part of this Heroes Path event, summoning champions, progressing the Heroes Path. I'll try to do a video on that when it goes live tomorrow, showing you the paths I would take through it, my recommendations as to what's good value, uh, and so on. There's actually really, really good champions in here, though. Really good champions. Uh, yeah, so whoop, let me get... I had, I had the wrong list of champions. There we go. Uh, it's still a really good list of champions. So <clears throat> and this is tomorrow, so the 18th of August is when this is going to be kicking off. 10x event, of course. So let's... Let's do the big ones first from Void Shards. The epic is going to be Demitha. Now, Demitha is a three turn buff extender, so she is top tier for Corpion and Cadaver strats as it is right now. Three turn buff extension, uh, block damage. Now, if that gets stolen, it's very bad, but if you can build tons of resistance, you're good. Or you could just ignore this move and have her just spam this uh, buff extension. So she works great for that. Obviously, with her block damage, she's top tier for, in fact, lots of Doom Tower bosses. And, uh, of course, for Demon Lord Clan Boss, unlocks unkillable. Very, very powerful. So, yeah, Demitha is a top-tier Void Epic, so that's a great one to get. And the legendary, speaking of top-tier, and also, incidentally, top-tier for that Corpulent Cadaver strategy is Chris the Ageless, another buff extender with ally protection. And he obviously has the provoke with increased defense on himself and speed on your allies. AOE decreased speed and the crazy passive big shield, putting out decreased defense on attackers. Chris is amazing. He is just brilliant um yeah so very very tempting like if you are close to your void mercy and you don't have a crisk or if you've got tons of void charts i could definitely see people pulling for this to try get a crisk you know one of the best champions for hydra if cadaver gets nerfed uh he's still going to be top tier in so many different teams for hydra so uh, for a lot of people highly highly desirable champions so they're the voids very strong voids the ancients and sacreds are a bit more of a mix um you've got some really good ones and then some fairly underwhelming ones so for the epics from Ancients and Sacreds, we have um, Deacon Armstrong coming in. Brilliant epic. Speed Aura, Turn Meter Control, AoE Decrease Defense, Leech on his A1. Amazing champion for just general progression. Brilliant for Demon Lord Clan Boss. Uh, he's not bad for Hydra, actually, like starting out. Pretty good. Lots of Doom Tower. Arena, brilliant starting out as well. Great champion. One of the best epics in the game. Really, fanta really fantastic. Another epic that has uh, remained relevant really for a long time. Going to the Undead Hordes, Seeker is coming in. Again, another key champion, both him and Deacon, for unlocking uh, a lot of clan boss compositions. For Demon Lord, Seeker, with the turn meter boost, increase attack, he can provoke on his A1. So remains, I still use him, right? For my Demon Lord clan boss team, I use the Seeker. Uh, and he's fantastic for Hydra as well, with the turn meter and a very good provoker. Uh, and he's great for early game arena with the defense aura. And again, the turn meter fill. Really nice. So just a brilliant champion overall. Then finally, we have Doom Priest, who again, I'd say is, is really, really strong progression champion. Cleansing every single turn. That's so useful. Again, not bad on Hydra to deal with the true fears uh, and the provokes and stuff. Um, she gives you increased attack. She can put out some increased crit rate, which isn't great. But it's really this passive is what it's all about. So strong for so many Doom Tower bosses. Good for Hydra. Brilliant. Brilliant for Demon Lord Clan boss. So, for example, 
you can use her uh, with some Emic Trunk Heart teams to make it affinity friendly because she cleanses off the stun with a decreased speeds uh, on Spirit Affinity. Really, really, again, great progression champion. We come to the legendaries, which is where it's a bit of a mixed bag. So probably the best one first is Mishinaki. He is back. We've seen a lot of Mishinaki recently. I've got two and I'm using them both because he's that good. Amazing champion, especially for Hydra. Also very good for Demon Lord and just in general. But AoE, stripping buffs and placing Hex. It's actually very useful for full auto and being cheeky. Um, then AoE, excuse me, decreased defense. That can put decreased attack on enemies under Hex. A1 burns. And then he can join in to attack. Uh, with an ally attack, 50% chance when he, uh, someone attacks somebody under Hex. This adds up a lot of extra damage between his just raw damage, which is high, Warmaster procs, duplicating that through Hex as well. Yeah, he's just a, an amazingly solid champion. So strong. Lots of ways you can build him as well. I've got one in Relentless for damage with a really good provoking team already. Then I've got one in Provoke set, and he's actually a very strong provoker in that team. So he's really good. Uh, a champion then... When we've got two more, uh, Roshgard the Tower. This one is fairly weak. I suspect perhaps you can you can maybe build a, a clan boss composition. Certainly can with him and Demitha, I'm pretty sure. Probably with him and Emic Trunkar, so I guess that's the idea. Apart from that, kind of underwhelming. Look, he's got block damage for two turns on a four-turn cooldown when booked. That's sort of his whole deal for Demon Lord clan boss. Not great apart from that. Like early game arena, sure, but... You know, Helicath is better, etc. There's lots of better versions of this. Um, and he's got other skills that you don't really use very much, to be honest. But yeah, Roshgard, I'd honestly like to see him get a bit buffed up. Something to set him apart. Probably a bit more of a damage focus would be cool. Like single target HP based damage. He's got a big old hammer. That would make sense. So a champion I'd actually like to see buffed. So not one I'd be rushing out to pull for. Then finally, Corvus the Corruptor is also in here. Um... Yeah, I think people like this champion. I think he is really good as well. Yeah, he's interesting. So he comes in with the AoE, puts out four poisons, double hitter, puts out four poisons and poison sensitivity. And then he comes in with a double hitter that extends enemy debuffs and extends ally buffs as well. A1 decrease attack, and then he also decreases the damage enemies under poison do, which is great. Defense and all battles aura. Really, really good champion for obviously Demon Lord for a hard dragon. And yeah, another brilliant ally uh, buff extender. Very strong. And one of the best poisoners in the game is kind of insane. So Corvus the Corruptor is actually a very good champion. Um, so yeah, I think the 10x event for this weekend actually looking really good. I talked about this yesterday. We'll see how good the hero's path is. But uh, Roxam as a reward for that is kind of interesting. I do find it a little bit amusing that Roxam doesn't even qualify to make it into the artwork. Isn't that a bit sad? Poor Roxam. Uh, but yeah, depending on the points for this, this could be a good event for people to go for. Uh, I'll break it down more tomorrow when we see the cost, but depending on your shard situation, it, it might be worthwhile. Probably won't need it. You could probably skip it entirely and still get a thousand points. I talked about that in the video earlier, but hey, it is uh, something just to note. There you go. That's basically all the news for this video, but probably more news coming soon. So stay tuned. I'm still waiting for my two star Artax soul. So I can get him up to three, four, five star. Been waiting a long time. He just doesn't want to show up. He doesn't want to show up. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you all soon. Goodbye.